Ringer Four Star Playhouse presents Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, David Niven, Ida Lupino. Detailed reports on the fuel supply losses as soon as possible. I'd like to have them in my office not later than noon today. We're holding a sector of the line that needs a constant flow of petrol. Very well. Please do. I'll be expecting them. Goodbye. I'm very sorry for the delay, sir. Well, it's quite all right. Did you bring the material on supply logistics? I did, sir. But there's another matter I'm certain you'll want to dispose of first. You mean the sentence of execution has actually been confirmed? Yes, sir. Surely public opinion... It will be most unfavorable, sir. Yes, I should imagine so. This is completely without precedent, isn't it? There's never been a soldier executed in the Australian Army. No, sir. Even the officers of the court-martial who sentenced Private Jones to death expected the sentence to be quashed higher up. Private Jones. Private Sidney Jones. Is there a time specified? The order states, sir, as expeditiously as possible. Naturally, that means yesterday. Where is this Private Jones imprisoned at the moment? In this area, sir. In this area? My area? Yes, sir. Then I have to issue the necessary orders. Yes, sir. I, I'm afraid so, sir. It seemed merely a routine matter until today. The officers of the court-martial, on the evidence, had no alternative. Under war conditions, they had to sentence this man to be shot. But I agree, it seems incredible that the sentence should not have been commuted by the powers that be. Colonel, I want Private Jones sent to the reinforcement area. Yes, sir. When, sir? As quickly as possible. Brigadier Hatfield will make the necessary arrangements. I don't envy him. All right, sir. <laughs> In 1943, I never expected to be doing more training in the desert. What did you expect? I expected to be killed. Well, soon enough. Listen, mate, you're in North Africa, you're a reinforcement, and your days are numbered. Where do we go from here? Well, as soon as the division comes up with some casualties, then go the reinforcements, and that's us. You stand the best chance of being knocked off when you're a reinforcement, you take my word for it. You know, the Americans have got a good word for their reinforcements. And the same word applies to us. We're foul-ups. Sure, we all pulled something somewhere along the line. Now we're reinforcements, and who wants us? The captain, too? Sure, he fouled up, too, so they say. Captain, company, Padre? Of course. Sit down, Captain. Why do you go through this battle training? You don't carry any weapons. Oh, I like to be near the fellows who do. Yeah, I suppose so. I wonder what they're gonna do about me. I don't know, Captain. They might send me home with that report hanging over me. They might send me back up into the line, but I, I'm afraid they won't do that. Maybe they'll just keep you here. I wonder why there's been no court-martial. 
You're a highly decorated man. <laughs> For what it's worth. Captain Adams? Yeah? Brigadier Hatfield wants to see you, sir. Immediately. All right. Sergeant Givens? Yes, sir. Carry on for another half hour and take the men back to billets. Yes, sir. All right, you men. See you later, brother. Take us out. I have to find work. Pass the buck and get a receipt for it, huh? It's been the same in every army since Caesar and his centurions. Yes, sir. Has Private Jones been transferred to me? Yes, sir. He arrived over an hour ago. What happened to my suggestion that he be sent further back? Since his execution here would be bad for the morale of my replacements. I forwarded the suggestion to command immediately, sir. The reply was negative. I knew it would be. All right. We'll handle this one, too. We've had the dirty end of every stick they could pass along to us. We can handle this one. But I want you to find me a new area, not too closely identified with this command. We'll conduct the execution there. I intend to remove myself as much as possible from the responsibility for this. But, sir, it's not as though the boy is not guilty. I know he's guilty, Colonel. I don't have to have you tell me that he's guilty. It's a simple matter of military discipline, and it has to be carried out, unfortunately, by me. Like every other dirty job. Yes, sir. Now, leave me alone when Captain Adams appears. I can handle him better if he's alone. Yes, sir. Is there anything else I can do, sir? Yes. Start looking for that new area. Captain Adams is outside, sir. Send him in. Come in. Stand at ease, Captain. Captain John Adams. Yes, sir. Military Cross. Yes, sir. You know about this report from your commanding officer, don't you? Yes, I do, sir. Not fit to command men in action. No longer suitable material for the field. Gently phrased, but very damning, wouldn't you say? Yes. Tell me about it. What happened? He was outside to Brook, sir. He hadn't had any sleep for days. We were advancing across a wadi. The place was thick with mines. Every now and then one of them would go up. You could hear the men screaming, but you couldn't stop. You had to keep going. When we were halfway across, we caught it, sir. Machine guns and mortars. We were under observed fire. They were waiting for us. Some of the men on the flank got across the wadi. None of them got back. The rest of us retreated through the minefield. Then I was ordered to lead a second attack with a reserve platoon, sir. I knew that something was wrong with my... My body didn't respond to the orders of my mind right away. There were two separate identities, my mind and my body. Suddenly the separation was complete. I started shouting, that's all I remember, so I started shouting. They tell me that I ran back. My men followed me, sir. Does it, does it say that in the report, sir, about the men following me back? Yes, it says that in the report, Captain. See now, Adams, your home is in Bancroft, isn't it? Yes, sir. A small place near Yarraweer. That's right, sir. They all know about you down there, don't they? Your military cross. They're proud of you. You'll be a big hero in Bancroft when you go back there after the war. Married? Yes, sir. Two boys, sir. This report goes back to Australia. It will be bad for you, won't it? At the moment, your commanding officer, you and I, are the only people who know about this, officially. Does the name Private Sidney Jones mean anything to you? Everybody in the army knows about Private Jones, sir. What do they know about him? That he deserted his unit and joined a gang of other deserters, Americans, Poles and British, in Alexandria. He was the only one caught when, the, when they were looting a train. A military policeman got shot and uh, he was charged with the murder. You know, then, of course, that he has been sentenced to be executed. Yes, sir. They'll, they'll never make that sentence stick. Oh. Why do you say that? He's guilty? Technically, he's guilty, yes, sir. But no one ever saw him with a gun. He was one of a gang. And certainly, from the evidence, he was no ringleader. You don't think he should be executed? 
You don't think an example should be made? I think he should be punished, yes, sir, severely punished, but not shot. Why not? He came out here to shoot the enemy, sir, not each other. Private Jones is going to be executed, Captain Adams. He's going to be executed under my jurisdiction. And you will be in command of the firing squad. No, I can't do that, sir. Of course you can. It's a mission of the highest importance. I certainly can't envy you your assignment. But to make it easier for you, I intend to tear up this report the moment the job's done. That's a sort of blackmail. Let's put it this way. Someone's got to do it. You're in no position to argue about it. The members of a firing squad can be detailed later, but your sergeant must be a first-rate man. It's most desirable that he be, let us say, willing, like yourself. By 1100 hours tomorrow, I want you to bring me the sergeant's name and a draft of your parade orders. That's all. Executioner. Whiskey. She was sergeant of the firing squad. <laughs> Look, I've done my share of killing, sir. Those that like it can do this job. Nobody likes it. Well, then why do they do it? That's a good question. Let's examine it. Sit down, Sergeant Gibbons. When did you leave Australia? In 1940, sir. 1940? Three years. It's a long time to be away, isn't it? I'll make a deal with you. You can be back in Sydney within two months if you do this job. I don't want any part of it, sir. Sydney? Two months? Listen, this chap, Jones, didn't kill that MP. Everyone knows that. He didn't even have a gun. So maybe he deserted. So maybe his unit was better off without him when the shooting started. Listen, the man deserted his unit, then he was mixed up in the shooting of an MP. Now he's going to be shot by orders of Supreme Headquarters in Canberra, and nothing can stop it. Yes, but, sir, you... Somebody has to do the job. It's a lousy, stinking job, so they throw out a little something to make it easier. You could be thrown a trip back home. What did they throw you, Captain? Me? They threw me a chance not to go back home. I don't get it. I don't get yours, either. We've made a deal, haven't we? Now I want you to detail ten men to the firing squad. They'll have no responsibility. You load the rifles and every other one will have blank ammunition in it. No man will know who actually did it.
You're going to make yourself very unpopular, Padre, associating with me. I'm not trying to win any popularity contests. I don't need any help. I know what I'm doing. Do you? I should have thought you would have best served your calling by attending to the needs of Private Jones. I have. He's a simple fellow. It's unworldly. Young. He still doesn't understand. He doesn't believe this is really going to happen. Stop it! I wish I could. Don't you? Captain, come in. You know Colonel Ramsey, Captain? Yes, sir. The Colonel has found an ideal site that's on the outskirts of the area. We'll move the prisoner and the squad in separate trucks. You found the proper sergeant, I trust. Yes, sir. Good. Official witness, medical officer, clergyman. I shall need an issue of some equipment, sir. Ten new rifles. The men won't use their own rifles, sir. They won't. Why not? Well, never mind. We'll issue the rifles. Can you think of anything else? That's all. When would it be, sir? Tomorrow morning. Oh, 0600 hours. That's all. see you, Captain. Private Jones. Oh, no. You must. I couldn't, Padre. I can't do that. It's your job, Captain. You have no choice. You understand? God help me, Padre. I'll pray for that. What time is it? Twelve o'clock. Six hours. Six hours. I'll go and see him. He, he wanted company, sir. I thought it would be all right. Here I am, sir. It was good of you to come, sir. There's no trouble. I, I was glad to. Would you like to sit down, sir? Yes, I would. Sit down, John. It was good of you to come. The Padre said you wanted to see me. Yes, I, I have a request. You see, sir, I'm, I'm ready to take the morning. But one thing worries me, sir. I don't want you and the chaps on the firing squad to, well, to feel bad about all this. I thought maybe if I shook hands with everyone before it happens. Oh, I can't, George. I, I can't grant that request. I, I'm sorry. You think maybe I understand, sir? If they did, they couldn't go through with it. Is that it? Perhaps, perhaps if you just gave them the message for me, would you do that? I'd be glad to. Thank you for dropping by to see me, sir. Maybe you would shake hands with me. I was going to ask you if I could.
NX457321, Private Sidney Jones. For desertion in the face of the enemy and for an act of willful murder, you have been sentenced by a general court martial. Prisoner, escort, left, turn! Quick, march! Refuse to obey the order. Colonel Ramsey. Sir. Place Captain Adams under close arrest. Yes, sir. Sergeant Gibbons. Sir. Sergeant Powell. Sir. Captain, come with me. Right. Jones will have his sentence commuted. By law, they can't put him through that again. There'll have to be a board of inquiry. Adams is the one who's in trouble now. God help him. He already has. Mm -hmm. 